Hi, I'm Ronan Guilfoyle, a Principal Solution Architect with AWS based in Dublin. Today I'm going to present a walkthrough of the steps required to accelerate your WordPress site with Amazon CloudFront, our content distribution network. CloudFront is a CDN that securely delivers data to your users globally with low latency and high transfer speeds. CloudFront speeds up delivery of data using a global network of POPs or edge locations, reducing delivery time by caching your content close to your end users. When content is not cached at an edge location, CloudFront fetches the content from your origin, which may be an Amazon S3 bucket or an Amazon Elastic Load Balancer fronting your WordPress servers. In order to use CloudFront to accelerate your website, you create a configuration called a distribution. Once we create a distribution, we can tune request routing, security and caching options. Before you start with CloudFront, I recommend implementing TLS security on your websites. This encrypts data in transit between users and your WordPress servers. It will increase the trust customers have in your site. It may improve search engine ranking. And with AWS, TLS or SSL certificates are free for use on CloudFront or AWS load balancers. So there's really no reason or excuse not to do this. The first step is therefore to create a TLS certificate to use with CloudFront, enabling TLS encryption between my end users and the CloudFront pops. You will find Amazon Certificate Manager in the AWS console. CloudFront requires that certificates are created in the North Virginia US East 1 region. In order to also secure communications between CloudFront and your Origin WordPress installation, you can create an ACM certificate in the region where you have your WordPress site and install or associate it with the load balancer. I won't cover this detail today, but we'll focus on the CloudFront configuration. We'll make sure we have selected the North Virginia or US East 1 region, select Get Started Under Provision Certificates, and request a public certificate. Here you type your domain name. I want to use the Naked or Apex domain for my site, but I'll also add a wildcard star.prettykittyinc as an alternate name on the certificate so that users typing the www won't receive a certificate error. I'll click next. Now I don't have email configured on this domain as it's just for a demo, so I'm going to choose DNS validation. This allows me to show Amazon Certificate Manager that I have ownership and control of the domain, which ACM requires before issuing my certificate. I'm going to confirm and request and continue. Now, if I click the drop down here beside the domain name, I can see the CNAME record that I'll create in DNS in order to complete domain validation. The CNAME details of the domain and wildcard are the same, but if I had created a valid subdomain like www, then ASM might ask me to create two or more CNAME records. I will create a CNAME with this name and this value. My DNS is managed in Route 53, so I'll open up the uh, Route 53 console now. So I'm now in the Route 53 console. Under Hosted Zones, I'll open up my domain name and you can see that I have already got an alias record pointing the top level or zone apex of my domain at an elastic load balancer fronting my site. While I'm here, it's a good idea to lower the TTL for CNAME or A records pointing to my site so that changes I make today will propagate faster. An alias record for the zone apex uses the TTL for the resource pointed to, so the option to change the TTL is not available here. You should note that lowering the TTL will increase the number of requests that Route 53 serves and so may increase your Route 53 bill. 60 seconds is a good minimum for today, but I'll consider increasing this later. So now to create the CNAME records I need, I'm going to click Create Record and the details I need are in the ACM console, so I can switch back there. And once I copy these details and create the record, ACM will validate my certificate. It might take a minute or two. Now, it's worth noting, please keep these CNAME records in your DNS if you want ACM to renew your expiring certificates automatically. If ACM cannot find these records, then it can't be sure that you still own or control the domain. I'll just have to wait a few moments and check back with the Certificate Manager console. Okay, that's done. Now I have the certificate, I will create the CloudFront distribution. So open up the CloudFront console. You don't have to worry about the region. This is a global service. Create a web distribution. A distribution is the configuration element for CloudFront, and it's through this distribution that I'll configure settings to secure and accelerate my WordPress site. I'll step through the initial creation and default settings, and then add fine-grained configuration in the form of origins and cache behaviors later. 
The origin domain name is the DNS address that CloudFront will use to reach your WordPress site. If, like me, you currently host your site on AWS behind a load balancer, the ELB or ALB has a DNS name that I'll choose here from the drop-down list. I don't type my friendly DNS name here because later I'll update DNS to point my friendly name to the CloudFront distribution. This is a DNS name CloudFront will continue to use to resolve my backend WordPress site. Next, under SSL protocols, we'll select the protocols we want to allow. This is for connections back to your origin from CloudFront. If, like me, you terminate TLS connections on an ALB, you can configure both ends to only allow TLS 1.2. For the broadest compatibility with server software, it may be okay to use the defaults, which allows TLS 1.1 1, 1 .1 and 1.2, but we don't recommend using SSL version 3 as it's been proven to be insecure. I'm gonna choose HTTPS only to prevent clear text connections to the back end. Timeouts can benefit from a little tuning. Due to the popularity of WordPress, there's a large number of plugins and add-on modules, and they may behave slightly differently. I believe these settings are a reasonable balance, but your mileage may vary. I'm going to set the origin response timeout at the default 30, but for origin keep alive timeout, I've increased this slightly to 30 seconds. And this may increase the load on your origin servers or ALBs, and you should ensure that the origin does not close or timeout the connections before this. However, as my site isn't busy, I prefer to keep the connections alive to reduce the latency associated with establishing new HTTPS connections. Default cache behavior settings configure how CloudFront treats requests. The first option I recommend is to set the viewer protocol policy to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. This allows your users to type a friendly DNS name without specifying a secure connection, and CloudFront will serve a HTTP redirect to instruct the browser to resubmit the request over a secure session. For allowed HTTP methods, we must allow POST, as users and administrators will be submitting forms using the POST method. We can ignore field level encryption, although it is a very interesting feature. This can be used to encrypt specific form field data at the CloudFront Edge so that it passes to and potentially through your application encrypted. Data that you encrypt in this way then can only be decrypted at the back end by specific systems with access to the private key. This is beyond the scope for today. We will cache, get and head, but I also recommend caching options as this can speed course requests. Under cache based on selected request headers, I'm going to choose to whitelist and specify to cache based on host and origin, and I'll also add referrer, as this can be used to optimize advertising and track visitors to your site. WordPress does not set cache control headers out of the box. You can use a plugin to set these headers. I'll configure CloudFront to add them if they're not already present and to control the minimum and maximum values allowed. The ideal values will depend on your site. If you update infrequently and you don't allow comments or posts, then you might benefit from caching pages for days. I'm going to accept the defaults for minimum and maximum of zero and one year, but I'll reduce the default TTL to five minutes or 600 seconds. This will cache pages at the CloudFront edges for five minutes if cache control or expires headers aren't set. This means that if someone visits a page or adds a comment, they may not see replies or other comments for five minutes as the previous page will be cached. WordPress uses various cookies to manage sessions. We will whitelist these, so they'll be forwarded from CloudFront back to your WordPress site, and they'll also form part of the caching decision at CloudFront. Now, under query, string forwarding. I'm setting this to forward all query strings to WordPress and to cache based on all. I'm going to ignore smooth streaming as I don't serve streaming content and I don't want to serve private content from my website. So finally here, say yes to compress. And now we have the distribution settings. Price class allows you to choose between best performance, enabling all edge locations and optimizing by restricting the pops used to those in the lower price classes. This might make sense if your users are generally restricted to those same regions. I'm choosing the default because it doesn't directly relate to my WordPress configuration. I'm not setting a WAF ACL today, although you might investigate managed rules as there are WordPress specific protections included in some of our partners offerings. Now by default, CloudFront will create a unique DNS name for my distribution but the alternate domain names is where I'll specify my custom friendly DNS names. So I'll include those here. 
For the certificate, I'll select Custom and choose the ACM certificate I created earlier. And then under Custom SSL Client Support, I'm happy to choose the default and allow only clients that support SNI because this really should cover all modern browsers. I'm going to choose the default security policy and this will allow CloudFront and the browser to negotiate the best protocol between them. I'll allow the default HTTP versions as well. And then I don't need to set a root object because WordPress handles this for me. I will specify logging. I've already created a bucket for logs. If you haven't created a bucket, you can do this later and, and not specify logging at the moment. The default settings do not log cookies. You might want to do this for debugging at some stage, but it is safe to choose the defaults. Similarly, leaving IP6 enabled makes sense unless you have a specific reason not to. And then choose Create Distribution. Now, the status field will display in progress until the updates to the CloudFront distribution are ready, and this can take a few minutes. We can continue our configuration while the distribution is creating. The next step is to tune the behavior for the specific paths WordPress uses for requesting both static and dynamic assets. I'll configure slash WP content and everything underneath it, and also slash WP includes. These will host static content, images, CSS files, JavaScript, etc. that WordPress users sometimes host in S3. Then I'll configure slash WP login.php, which is just the login dialog, and WP admin and everything underneath that. These are paths that WordPress will execute or compute and return dynamic content for. And the order I create them does not necessarily matter as I can reorder behaviors later if needed. I mentioned that you can use a plugin for WordPress to store or offload static content to Amazon S3. I'm not going to cover this today, but you can find information in the WordPress Best Practices white paper on our website. Now, edit your distribution and select the Behaviors tab. Click Create Behavior and you'll be taken to this page. Here I can specify the path pattern. I'll repeat this for the four paths I mentioned, starting with slash WP content. CloudFront will apply the behaviors I'm configuring to any HTTP request that matches this path. Choose the origin. You may only have a single origin listed if you have a default installation. I'll choose my elastic load balancer. For the viewer protocol, I'm choosing the same settings as I did for the default behavior, which is to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. And for allowed HTTP methods, I'm only choosing get, head and options, as this path refers to static content, and so we cannot post or submit forms here. Again, I'm caching options methods, and I'm choosing to whitelist selected headers, which CloudFront will forward and base caching decisions on. These headers are origin, host, access control request headers, and access control request method. The CloudFront developer guide suggests that if caching options responses, you should forward these last two headers. For object caching, I'm happy to set reasonably long defaults for static content. Again, as WordPress does not set cache control or expires headers out of the box, I'm going to have CloudFront add these. The minimum TTL, I'll leave at zero, the max at one year. These values only apply limits in case the origin has set values outside of those limits. For example, if I have an object set to cache for 10 years. The default TTL I'm using is one day. This should reduce the number of requests to my origin and improve the speed my site has delivered to users. An example of how this might affect requests, um, imagine I change the logo of my website but use the same file name. Now CloudFront will continue to serve the old file if it's cached until the TTL expires. If this happens you can invalidate the CloudFront cache to have objects purged though so you don't necessarily have to leave old objects in cache. Now you don't need to forward cookies for this content and setting this to none will result in more requests being served from the cache. Similarly, I will not forward query strings and I'm not restricting access. And again, say yes to compress. Now the configuration for slash WP includes is exactly the same. So I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader. You can rewind uh, the video here. Uh, and then I'll continue on and create the cache behavior for slash WP admin and slash WP login. So again, click create behavior and here the path pattern is slash WP admin slash star to catch any file under that path. I'll choose my elastic load balancer as the origin for the viewer protocol. Again, redirect HTTP to HTTPS. Under allowed HTTP methods, I'm choosing 
the full list get head options put post patch delete as this is the forms based administration site for WordPress. Again, I'm going to cache get head and options requests and under selected request headers, I'll whitelist host and origin. You may want to add headers for other specific use cases or tracking, etc. Now, as this is the admin console for my WordPress site, I want to see changes I've made reflected immediately, and I'm happy that that may be at the expense of performance for my administration session. So I'll trust that WordPress or a plugin can set cache control headers, but I'm not going to override these at CloudFront. This should result in requests immediately being sent to the WordPress backend, unless WordPress itself or a plugin makes a, an informed decision by setting headers for me. WordPress makes use of cookies in the administration section and also if you allow comments. The cookies that I'll whitelist here are comment underscore author underscore and there's several there, uh, WordPress hyphen test hyphen cookie, WordPress underscore star and WP settings star. I'm not streaming content and unlike the case for static content, I will forward and cache based on all query strings. I'm not restricting access and again say yes to compress. Finally, I have no Lambda function associated so I can skip that bit. The next behavior is configured exactly the same, but the path pattern is slash wp hyphen login dot php. Again, I'll leave this as an exercise for the viewer. You can rewind the video here and follow along using the second path pattern. Now, if I go back to the CloudFront distribution, I can see the changes I've made are still propagating. This is probably a good time for coffee. Feel free to pause the video. I'll be here when you come back. Once the CloudFront distribution's status reads deployed, we should be good to go. Although you might test the distribution first and basic testing is covered in the CloudFront docs. My next step is to repoint DNS so that visitors reach my site via CloudFront instead of going directly. Now, if you go to the root 53 console and edit the hosted zone corresponding to your WordPress domain, this assumes you're hosting your DNS in root 53. If you have a different DNS provider, the console will be different, but you'll be essentially completing the same tasks. Now, if we click on the hosted zone for your DNS, find the records you want to update. In my case, the alias record for the zone apex and the C name for www. If I select the alias record, I can see the target is currently my load balancer. Now if I clear this form field, then I can choose my CloudFront distribution from the drop-down list. Now just press save record set. Well, you should repeat this for any other DNS records that point to your WordPress site. Once the DNS record TTL has expired, I should be able to test my new CloudFront accelerated site.